Our today's discussion is on MATLAB simulation of interleaved boost converter. This is the basic topology of an interleaved boost converter. Here two conventional boost converters are connected in parallel and this circuit offers several advantages over conventional boost converter. The first advantage is the ripple current in the input and output stage is reduced. If these are the ripple in each inductor current, then the input ripple will be much lower than the inductor ripple. And therefore the input and output capacitor values can be minimized. The second advantage is that, by splitting the current through two different paths, the overall I square R loss is reduced. That is, if initial loss is I square R, then the current loss becomes, I divided by 2 square into, R. Since we divided the total current into 2, the stress on each device can also be minimized. The third advantage is that, the effective switching frequency is increased without increasing the switching loss. And finally, the circuit provides a fast transient response to load changes, and improves the power handling capability. Before going into the design, first I will give you the specifications of the converter. Minimum input voltage is 200 volt. Maximum input voltage is 350 volt. Switching frequency is 5 kilohertz. Power output is 2 kilowatt. Output voltage is 400 volt. Current ripple is 40%. Now output current is given by, P out divided by V out. That is 2 kilowatt divided by 400 volt, which gives 5 amps. Ripple current is 40% of 5 amps, that is 2 amps. Maximum duty ratio, D max is given by, V out minus V in min divided by, V out. That is 400 minus 200 divided by, 400 which gives max duty ratio, 0.5. Now the value of inductance is given by, L min is equal to, win minimum into D max, all divided by, switching frequency into current ripple. That is L minimum is equal to, 200 into 0.5 divided by, 5000 into 2. Which gives the minimum value of inductance as 10 milli Henry. This is the controller block diagram. The output voltage is compared with the reference voltage and given to the PI controller. The output of PI controller is taken as the current reference. For both the inductor current, we have two separate current control loops. PI controller is used in both control loops. The output of the current controller is given to the PWM generation block, which generate the PWM signals. And these PWM signals are used to drive each MOSFET in the circuit. The carrier signals used for the generation of both the PWM are different, in an interleaved converter. For the first PWM generation, a unit amplitude triangular waveform is used. And for the generation of the second PWM, the same triangular signal is used, but with a 180 degree phase shift. Now we open the math lab and start doing the simulation. Add a DC voltage source. Set the amplitude 200 volt. Add a current measurement block. Connect it to the DC source. Add a go-to block. And connect it to the measurement block. Name it as IL. Add a series RLC branch. Make the branch type inductance, and set the value 10 milli Henry. Copy the RLC branch. Connect measurement block to each inductor. Copy the go to block, and connect to each measurement block. Name it as IL1. And name it as IL2. Add a diode. And connect in series with each inductor. Add a MOSFET. Copy the MOSFET block and connect to the diode anode terminal. Add a from block. And connect it to the gate terminal.
Name it as PWM1. Name it as PWM2. Copy the RLC branch. Set the branch type capacitor, and set the value 2000 microfarad. Connect the capacitor to each diode. Copy the RLC branch. Make the branch type resistor, and set the value 80 ohms. Add a voltage measurement block. And this is used to measure the output voltage. Add a go-to block. Name it as V-out. Now we start connecting the controller blocks. Add a constant block. Set the reference voltage 400. Add a sum block. Change its sign to plus minus. Create the from block for the load voltage. Add APID controller. Set controller type PI. Set KP5 and KI10. Limit output between 0 to 15. Copy the sum block. Create the from block for the inductor current IL1. Copy the sum block. And connect to the same PI output. And create the from block for the inductor current IL2. Copy the PID controller. Set KP2 and KI0.5. Limit the output between 0 and 0 0.95. Copy the PID controller. Add a relational operator. Change the operation to greater than or equal to. Connect it to the PID controller. Add a repeating sequence. Set the values for 0 to 1, 5 kHz, triangular waveform. Copy the repeating sequence. Set the same values for 180 degree phase shifted triangular waveform. Connect the PWM signals to the output of the relational operator. Add a scope. Open the scope settings. Make number of input ports 3. And also limit the data points. Connect IL1, IL2, and IL to the scope.
Add another scope. Connect load voltage to the scope. Add a power guide block. Set simulation type discrete and sampling time 1E rise to minus 6. Open the model settings. Choose fixed step, ODE8 solver type, and step size, 1E rise to minus 6. Now set simulation time 1 second, and run the simulation. Open the scope to view the output voltage. The output voltage is perfectly regulated at our reference value of 400 volts. Open the scope to view the inductor currents. Here you can see that each inductor ripple current is nearly 0.7 amps, and the total input ripple current is only 0.3 amps. Now we change the input voltage to 350 and see the results again. Now run the simulation again. Open the scope to view the output voltage. The output voltage is perfectly regulated at our reference value of 400 volts. Open the scope to view the inductor currents. Here each inductor ripple is 0.5 amps, and the total ripple is only 0.12 amps. Now I will change the load and show you the results. Set 200 ohms. Increase the simulation time to 2.5 seconds, and run the simulation again. Open the scope to view the output voltage. The output voltage is perfectly regulated at our reference value of 400 volts. Open the scope to view the inductor currents. Inductor ripple is 0.5 and the total ripple is only 0.08. This is the end of this presentation. Thanks for watching.